Statistics and Excel, misleading histogram. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know. That CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. So you could just open a blank worksheet. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can focus just on the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, just having the data so we can practice formatting the cells as we work the practice problem. Go into the example tab to look at the end result that we will be building. We've got our data set on the left hand side. We're going to be sorting our data set. We're going to be taking the average and then we'll make a histogram. We'll talk about how that histogram isn't really representative or is a little bit possibly misleading of the data set or possibly the average over here is a little bit misleading of a number. Then we'll look at a similar data set and we'll calculate the average. It'll have some similarities, but result in a much different uh, histogram. We have the same average between these two data sets, much different histogram. All right, let's go to the blank tab in order to build this. So now we have two sets of data here. We're gonna be focusing first on this first set of data. We're imagining that we took some tests of a random sample of people to test for how many ovaries they have. And that's gonna be this set of data. If you don't have access to it, you can basically build your own set of data if you so choose using some methods we talked about in the past. This second data set we will hide for now and then we're gonna be using uh, after we build the first histogram. So the first thing I would like to do is format the entire worksheet like we do basically every time. I'm gonna select the triangle. I'm gonna right click on the entire worksheet and then format the cells. We're gonna to go to currency. I'm in the numbers group, currency, negative numbers bracketed and uh, red. I don't need the dollar sign and I don't want any decimals at this point. This uh, column has decimals. So maybe I'll add them back in when I get there. But for now, I will remove them as the default. So next, what I would like to do is hide. Let's actually make it bold too. I'm gonna select the entire worksheet, home tab, font group. I'll make it bold because I think that might help for the screen recording. You might not need to do that. I'm holding control and scrolling in. So I'm currently at 225% on the scroll in. I'm gonna hide column C because I would like to just work with the this set of data first. So to hide something, you could select the entire column and then I'm gonna right click on the column that has been selected and then we're just gonna hide it. Now you could tell if something is hidden because it goes from A, B, C is missing and then we're over to D. All right, so now we're gonna be working with our ovaries data. Let's go ahead and center this top one just so Excel can kind of uh, see that it is indeed a header, home tab, alignment center. 
I'm going to make it into a table. There's no missing cells, so I can just select any place within this group, go to the insert tab, tables group, and make a table. The dancing ants do their mamba around A1 to A51. I think that looks correct, so I'm going to say OK. So there we have it. I'm going to make the table. I'm, I've got the table design. Let's make it like orange this time just to switch things up a bit. So now I'm going to sort the table uh, by A to Z or Z to A, selecting the drop down and going, let's go from A to Z. So this is why I think this data set would be fairly easy to make or make a similar one if you want to go through this practice problem to get an idea of what is happening here. Because of course, if you were to take a sample of people and test for how many ovaries they have, another example would be to test for how many testicles they have or something, right? You would expect that they would have either generally zero or two. Now, again, you might come up with some that have one or something like that uh, due to some, some circumstance or something. But as a general rule, you would think that it would be uh, zero or, or two. Now, you can imagine how the data could be a little bit misleading if you start to, if you build a data set based on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my column D and make that a skinny. So I'm gonna put my cursor before, between D and E, make a skinny D, and let's do an average calculation. So average, so we can use the average function, you can call it the mean as well, equals the average. This is our you know baseline number. Most people think about the first number that we use to represent something is usually the average. So I'm gonna select the data set by selecting the, the dropdown uh, right there. So it's just the data. So the average of that data set it comes out, let's to add a decimal to this one. Now I'm gonna add decimals as appropriate, right? So I'm gonna to go to the home tab, alignment, and let's go to this decimals right here, increase decimals. So it comes out to 1.06. So you can you can imagine, you know, the argument so that could be made that would be misleading on this data set. And unfortunately, you know, when you can't trust the, the data sometimes then this is this is the way things can get kind of misleading unfortunately these days in the united states in our scientific community i can actually imagine them using a, a data like this like ah, what are you, the average ovaries of a, of a human being is is around one it's around one and it's like well okay maybe but uh you know you're kind of missing some you're missing some stuff there aren't that, that i don't think that could you know, if you just rely on that one number from a medical perspective, you might be doing horrific things, you know, based on this kind of analysis, right? There's something, something is missing, it seems like. Now, if we then make a histogram of the data, that becomes a little bit more clear, possibly, right? So if I select the data and I, and I select the data here and we go insert and then charts and make a histogram, so now we have our histogram and I pull this on over and I'm going to go, okay, let's get rid of the title of it. My buckets, let's just check the buckets. If I go to the sidebar on the buckets, it's at 0.95. All right, let's keep it at that. So now you would expect if it was a normal distribution type of thing, the histogram would be tall in the middle and taper off. That's what we kind of often see in histograms. But here, of course, it's you've got these two bars on either side and very little in the middle right uh so so and that gives us an idea of like okay well well the average is one so that you would think that that most people would fall in the middle right in in the one but no even though the average is one you know people are falling on either side because obviously what we're really counting here is is the you know the statistics related to basically men and women in general right and so it's a, so that's how things can get kind of misleading now if i compare that to a similar data set let's unhide this cell now i'm going to go from b to d i'm going to put my cursor on b and then drag on over to e or as far as you want to go so that the un, so that the hidden cells between b and d have been selected right click on that selected area and unhide. So, so now we've got this second data set. Now this one I've designed to basically come up with a similar average, but have more of a, a closer to a normal distribution. So we can see what the two data sets would look like that would come up 
to these different kind of histograms, even though they have a similar average, right? So if I, if I select this, let's go ahead and add the decimals on this. So I'm gonna select the entire thing. I'm gonna to go to the home tab, numbers, and we had some decimals on this. So if you wanted to build your own data set, you know, you're, you're basically trying to build a data set that is, is around from one, uh, from between one and two, that has an average around uh, 1.06. So if I was to then enter home tab, insert, and then enter a table. So here's our table. And so there's our data. And let's make this one like, uh, I don't know, can we make it green? Uh, let's make it like that green. I like to have the header column on it. So this is just, and then I'll, I'll maybe I'll wrap the data. Home tab, uh, alignment, and then we'll wrap it and then center it, alignment and center. How about that? All right, so the second data set, uh, let's go down and put the average of it down here. So this is the average of the second data set equals the average brackets. And then I'll select my data set and enter. So then there it is. Let's add it some decibels, home tab, number, add some decimals. Now note that if, if you wanted to build a data set like this, by the way, and you're saying, hey, look, I'm getting, I'm get, I got my data set, I'm just putting random numbers in there between, that are between one and uh, two. So you might use an average number generator if you wanted to, to do that, that's one way you could do it, and then you can adjust the numbers within it. If you want the average to get to 1.06, then you can adjust, you can pick one of those cells possibly, and you might be able to use a goal seek function. So let's say this was at like 0 0.0, let's say this was at uh, 0.0, well, let's just change, let's change this one. Let's, let's pretend this one was at one uh, or at zero. And so now I'm at 1.04. And you're like, I wanna make it 1.06. So one tool to do that is I can click off the cell I can go into my data up top and you can go into then the forecast group and use this what if analysis. So I can say what if, and then I wanna use the goal seek function. So now what I'm gonna do is, is, is I'm gonna say, hey, look, I want you to make this cell B, uh, B 1.06. And I want you to do that by changing what's in this cell. So notice that this cell is hard coded. It's been typed in there. So that means that Excel can use trial and error. It's just gonna, it's gonna be like if you didn't know algebra and you just kept guessing what number X should be until X gets to the proper number so the answer is right, right? That's basically what Excel is doing. So again, we're telling Excel, hey, Excel, make this cell down here be what I know the answer should be, 1.06, do it by changing this variable factor, that cell, which happens to be a hard-coded number. And I could say, okay, and then it picks, and then it makes the right number, right? So 1.1, uh, that's what, if I just change that one number so that this average function picks it up. So that's just some useful tools if you're trying to back, back into your data set. But in any case, now this is an average. So you come up with the same average. So if we were representing these data sets with just one number, it's like, well, they're the same. But if I make a histogram of the second data set, selecting the data set, and I'm gonna scroll down a bit so my histogram will pop up over here, insert tab, and then charts, and then make a histogram. And I'm gonna pull that over. So now, you know, it's not exactly a, you know, bell curve distribution, because again, I kind of just randomly made the numbers, so you expect it to be, but in any case, it looks a whole lot different than this, right? It looks a little bit more uh, evenly distributed. So these two data sets, although they come up with the same average, which is obviously the one number that we would usually think about as the first thing we might use, the average doesn't give us an, ac an, an accurate picture between the two data sets and it could lead us it could lead us to very misleading 
conclusions. And and again, un- unfortunately, in the United States medical I, community, so, at least some of them, not all of them, of course, you could you could almost imagine them giving you a data set like the, like the average, and then giving you some diagnosis on it. Right? I mean, you'd be like, okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, but in any case, let's go ahead and make this one green, uh, uh, or, or let's see if we could change the color of it to match our green data set. And then let's make this one. Uh, let's make this one. What did we make it? Let's change the color of this one to like orange. Or no, I want it the other way around. This one should be orange, and. This one should be green. Get your color coding right, or people are gonna get confused. I'm not trying to confuse people. This is supposed to be clear. We're making pictures to make things clear, not confusing. So that's the that's the idea. And obviously, you know, obviously the the the, the problem is, of course, this data set is only gonna have you know zeros and zeros and twos. You would expect, whereas this data set has a distribution that's going between you know, uh, zero and, and two, you know, so you could see how those two data sets are distinct. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. Maybe looks a little nicer, right? These two skinnies should be the same. If you want these two, the same skinny size, you could see the width in pixels when I do this, but also you could like take one of them. I select the entire one home tab, clipboard format painter, and then just format paint your other skinny. So now you've got the same width of the skinnies. Also, you can, well, the other way you can do it is you could say like this, if this was a wide one and I wanna make them the same skinnies, I can select this skinny, hold down control and then select this one, that skinny. And then I can put my cursor between either one of them. And because they're both selected and to select both of them that are non adjacent, they're not next to each other. You have to hold control down. I've now let go of control and now I'm gonna, then now that'll make them the same skinny as well. So that's about it. All right.